welcome to the uh, Weld School channel. Today we are working on OxyFuel welding. Uh, we're going to specifically work with some R45 or RG45 filler rod. We are actually adding the filler rod this time instead of just an autogenous uh, weld, which would be without any filler. So I have a couple beads here, and the point of this video is that. I'm going to show you, you can get an Oxy Fuel Weld to look almost identical to a 7018, even almost like a 6013. Uh, it's, it's actually really not that hard. Uh, if you're one of those students that are new to the uh, welding program, whatever it is, uh, you may be doing some Oxy Fuel. Some programs have already done away with Oxy Fuel. You're not going to learn the skill, go out there and get a job in Oxy Fuel. It doesn't exist. Uh, it, it's so old. Um, I believe it was 1892 when uh, Sir Humphrey Davies, uh, if I'm saying that right, uh, discovered acetylene. Acetylene gas is C2H2, so it's two carbons, two hydrogens, it's a, it's a hydrocarbon. Uh, just like gasoline is a hydrocarbon, diesel, uh, propane, uh, propylene, it's really, you're gonna have that carbon and hydrogen mix, and that's how we're gonna go ahead and get that hot flame. Uh, Acetylene itself is going to be the hottest flame um, that we can use for a fuel gas. However, its BTU value is not as high as some of the other gases. Uh, but for welding with that tip being so close, it works. It's going to work, uh, you know, really well because we can heat our metal up really quick and we can move relatively quick across uh, the materials. We're, we're going to weld some thin stuff here today. Uh, we have some eighth inch materials the flame of a neutral uh, as oxygen and acetylene a flame would be about 5600 degrees fahrenheit uh, give or take uh, depending on if you are slightly carburizing you'd be a little less and if you are oxidizing you can actually get that flame up a little bit higher we're going to always focus on using a neutral flame for for just about everything i mean sometimes you hear people use uh a slightly oxidizing flame to do some braze welding. Uh, that way you can move even quicker across. Braze welding is not base metal fusion. You're not melting the base metal and then adding the braze rod. It's actually something that melts at 840 degrees or above is brazing, soldering anything under that 840. Uh, but here today, we're gonna actually wanna melt that base metal, which uh, I'm using some mild carbon steel and that metal would melt approximately 2,800 degrees. So. How can we get our weld to look like a 7018? Something really smooth like that. So what I have here is a 7018, and this is just eighth inch material. I used a 332 rod and I ran it low. I would typically run these things probably, uh, you know, low to mid nineties on some plates, but since it was thinner material, it's probably like 79, 80 amps. And I got a beautiful bead here. It looks great. It, the toes tie in, the profile looks good. You know, it's, it's a good looking weld. And I can go ahead and take my oxyacetylene torch with my R45, RG45. R is rod, G for gas, and it's 45,000 pounds tensile strength. And I can get that weld to look almost identical, really smooth. So if you're a newbie to this, you're probably like, how are you doing that? Well, I've probably done this for, for a few years, right? I've been teaching uh, about 15 years, uh, you know, at different schools. And, uh, you know, I didn't do it right off the bat. It, it takes some time. So the number one most important thing is we want to make sure that we are using a one-to-one -one ratio when we're actually welding. So we have, in my class, we are actually going to let them cut first. So they did some oxy-fuel cutting, and then we're doing some oxy-fuel welding. And as mentioned, this has been around for a long time. There's no jobs out there. I am so happy that we still uh, incorporate this into our welding program because it's really something that it'll help you appreciate history. It'll uh, help you appreciate where we are today in terms of welding pro processes and where we're actually headed. So this is you know old school, but it's really cool to keep that history alive. The other thing is, you know, people are like, I, I'm never going to use this ever again. Yeah, but you're actually looking at a puddle. You are controlling a puddle with a torch, and you're adding a filler rod. What other process is similar to that? If you're saying TIG welding, yeah, you got to hold a uh, TIG torch in one hand, filler rod in the other, and you're dipping into a puddle, uh, very similar to this, 
Uh, obviously, you could go probably a lot quicker when we're using electric arc. We're getting uh, arc uh, temperatures, you know, six, seven, eight, nine thousand degrees. So it's gonna it's gonna move a lot quicker. It, it is gonna look a lot better. Uh, but again, it's kind of like a little training exercise for those students that are starting out, and then it kind of gets them into TIG. So I'm glad we still keep that around. So going back to this, we have a one-to-one -one ratio. We're not cutting. I'm not doing like five on acetylene and 20, 25, 30, whatever on oxygen. If I'm gonna set up my tanks, I'm gonna set my regulators to that one-to-one -one ratio. So you could be three and three, four and four, five and five. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that. All right, so I already, I already opened these up. Uh, you know, this is oxygen is a high pressure tank, 2,200 pounds per square inch of pressure inside of these at 70 degrees that's when they're fully loaded uh, right now i'm just under 500 pounds so um, i got i got enough life left in this for now but when i do open these i crack it slow and then once this jumps up then i'm going to go ahead and open it all the way because it's a high pressure tank we don't want to restrict there and for my acetylene tank i'm going to go ahead and crack this the regulator on the tank side is gonna jump up and just over a hundred pounds left in here. And then I'm gonna give it maybe another turn or two. So we wanna be able to shut this down quickly if we need to. Now, what's really important to get that good flame, that five to five, I'm gonna set my acetylene first over here and I'm gonna open this acetylene. And if you could see here, you know, this is my working pressure. You can hear the gas, okay. 15 is our max, it becomes an unstable gas at over 15 pounds. So I'm just gonna pick five, five is a, a nice easy number to find, but that's a working pressure. So I have to have this fuel expelling out of the torch tip. I close it, it looks like it's jumping up, it's above five, that's okay. That pressure's building up, it's waiting to be released and it goes back down to that five. Now sometimes on these uh, oxygen tanks, we start at zero, goes up to 20 is the first number you really see. And you got a couple hash marks in there. So it's like, well, where is five? It's a little bit hard to tell. So what I do is I'm gonna go back to my acetylene. I know it's at five. I listen to it. Okay. I'm gonna shut that off. Now I'm gonna open this. A little bit quieter, right? So I'm not quite at five. There we go. So that's pretty close. So that's the oxygen and acetylene. I'd say we're pretty close to five and five. All right, so we want that one-to-one -one ratio. That's really important. The next thing is, you know, I wanna make sure that I have a clean tip. You should know, crack your oxygen, get that air blowing out of there, you know, find the right tip. So as that air is blowing out, it's gonna get rid of any debris in there. Kind of file this out a little bit, clean it up. Don't go crazy, because this is a file. It'll enlarge in the orifice there. Uh, this is a, a size one I'm using. And so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna light my acetylene, and I wanna make sure I set a proper flame. So I can see a lot of smoke there. I can see soot, the little chunks flying off. I don't wanna let that go for too long. It's gonna land on me, and if I try to brush it off, it's just gonna smear. So I wanna go ahead and bring this to a point where the smoke begins to clear. I usually tell the students about an inch, inch and a half off the torch, you see it start to flare out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in. And I have what looks like a nice neutral flame. So just below that I have carburizing and I can show videos of this where it's a little bit easier to see. Carburizing so you're not burning off all of the carbon and you're gonna get that carburizing flame but you'll see the carbon as white hot carbon in the puddle. And you'll see in the video, there's neutral. And it may need a little more oxygen as you well. You'll see the white hot carbon rise up. We want to wait till that clears. So we had enough oxygen to burn off all of that. And then we want to avoid the oxidizing flame here. So that oxidizing flame is louder and a sharper flame, but you also lose the brilliant blue flame uh, that you would see with a neutral flame. I tacked up a bunch of pieces and I'm gonna go ahead and weld these together. The big thing that I see students do is... So they start to add the filler rod and try to melt the filler rod. You're not melting the filler rod. The puddle will melt the filler rod. So you'll see that uh, in these videos. You get the puddle out to size, whatever it is. And I would say these puddles, 
or beads are probably about five sixteenths on average in width from toe to toe. And once I have that size puddle, all I'm doing is keeping this rod really close and I'm letting the end of the tip get to a temperature where it's just about ready to drop off. You see it hanging? And then I just dab right to the front of the puddle maybe towards the middle front to middle is okay you don't really want to reach across and get to the back of the puddle that doesn't make any sense and you want to go ahead and dip and move and dip and move you can oscillate which will give you the really smooth weld like this looks like a 7018 i actually did this one uh i'll show you in the video as well kind of has that ripple appearance like a 6010 i was just going forward back and as i go forward i'm taking the heat away bringing it back i wait for that puddle to spread out into a little circle a little dime and then i dip every time doing forward back now i don't think this is really realistic um, i think it takes too much time where i can go a lot quicker uh, doing the oscillation just spreading that heat but you it, it kind of shows that you can manipulate these torches in ways to make the, the welds look uh, different the other thing is uh, if you're getting the torch that's popping a lot, uh, you're, you could be starving the torch. That's possible. So it would be based on your uh, flame setting. But the other thing that happens is students get that torch so close that you're overheating the tip and then you're going to get that pop. So the first time it pops for a new student, they're like, whoa, what just happened? Uh, so it makes you jump. So usually when I demonstrate it uh, first for my students, I'm going to go ahead and do things right and wrong so they can see everything uh, you know good and bad so i try to get it to pop and then the first time it does they all jump and i'm kind of used to it by now i've been doing it long enough uh, but every once in a while it'll catch me by surprise uh, once you start to see those sparks flying off up in the air you're probably getting close to popping so you got to be careful with these rods you're probably going to have some cleaning agents in here like a possibly like a silicon or manganese in here that'll go ahead and help remove any of that mill scale, bring it up to the surface or spread it out to the edges. Uh, you know, you can weld on cold rolled, hot rolled. It doesn't really matter with oxy fuel. Same thing with stick, doesn't make a difference. That stuff will help kind of release, uh, release that from the surface and move it away from where, uh, away from the bead a little bit. So you don't really have to be crazy about cleaning these, you can, uh, but get that puddle going, watch your speed, make sure you see the toes tie in and just dip and move, dip and move. And it's pretty amazing the kind of welds that you can get uh, from OxyFuel welding. And uh, hopefully you try it, you know, maybe some flat positions, some autogenous with filler, uh, do some braze welding. You know, get, get, get out of position, do something that's not flat on the table. Uh, try to do some 2G or, or 2F, 3F, go over vertical, try an overhead. Uh, it'll give you an appreciation for these welders that did this. Uh, a long time ago back in the day um, long before we were around so uh, still a great process fun to work with uh, you know I don't do it every day but when I do I, I really do enjoy oxy fuel welding so thanks for watching the video uh, if you like the videos you know give me some comments in the uh, comment section uh, anything else you'd like to see you know I've kind of been slacking I do have a family uh, and, and making these videos does take a while but I do appreciate you watching and uh, hope I can help you uh, learn welding, become better at welding. You know, I'm always trying to better myself, even though I've been doing this for a couple decades now. Uh, but I, I love it, and uh, I'm here to spread uh, hopefully some good information. And uh, hope you enjoy the videos. I know I blabber a lot. I try to keep them short and sweet because people don't want to watch them for too long. But uh, I'll keep cranking them out, and appreciate you watching. Thank you.